Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to my series on design for 3D printing. Contrary to popular belief, you cannot 3D print anything. You must design your parts for 3D printing. In this video, I'm going to talk about tolerances and joinery. There are several ways you can join 3D printed parts, and my favorite way is with metal. Nuts and bolts work great. There are a few things, though, to consider, of course, if you're going to do this. And the first is tolerances. You cannot design and print a half inch pin and expect it to fit in a half inch hole. Nor can you print a quarter inch hole and expect to slide a quarter inch bolt through it. I printed a test block and a pin a long time ago and found that you typically need to allow 20 thousandths or half a millimeter of clearance for your parts to fit nicely. You can use this check block to get a feel for how you want your part to fit, but it will simply not fit if it's less than 10 thousandths difference. 20 thousandths or half a millimeter provides a nice fit that will spin if needed and it's easy to insert or remove. You should print your own test setup like this if you have a different model printer because each one has its own tolerances. If you need a bit tighter fit then 15 mil is the way to go and 10 mil clearance is good for a press fit part that's not intended to ever come apart. Oh and by the way a mil is a thousandth of an inch. Uh, it has nothing to do with the metric system, which is the millimeter, and I know that's weird, huh? So, what do I do with this 20 mil difference? I can fit shafts to pulleys and hubs, I can slip bolts through holes, I can embed nuts in a part, I can fit rocket fins in place, and pretty much anything that needs to go together will go together nicely on a craft bot with a 20 thousandths difference. Now, pay attention to this. If you have concentric circles or something, you need to make sure that you offset by 10 thousandths uh, so that the total is 20. If you offset your figures by 20 thousandths, then you'll have a 40 thousandths difference, and that's simply way too loose. And this, of course, works for any shape. If you're going to screw a part together, then I would advise against using a tapped hole. I've done it on occasion, but it's really not necessary because the bolts will tend to tap themselves, and the taps remove your precious plastic. Your bolt heat and pressure from driving the bolt will form perfect threads for you. If you're going to use a die to cut external threads, you need to make sure that you do it only across the grain. The die will split the layers apart if you try to cut the threads parallel to the grain. And doing this would create, be a bad idea anyway because the filament wouldn't be following the function. The last uh, consideration for external threads is to make sure that your part has enough shells to allow the die to pass. The filament is only 0.4 millimeters wide, and the teeth of most threads are much taller than that. So check a table of thread height to make sure that you have an adequate shell thickness, because if you cut into the infill, all is lost. Now I know a few of you are going to say that, well, you can just print the threads on. Before you say that, yes, you're partially correct. An approximation of large threads can be printed, but they're never good enough for really small parts because of the bumps between the layers as you go around the helix. One last trick to form your threads is to heat your bolt or nut and then carefully form the threads that way because they'll melt in place. I prefer to use bolts instead of screws when joining 3D printed parts for a couple of reasons. First, the bolts have smaller and less aggressive threads. This is good because we typically print parts with a two shell wall thickness, uh, which is only 0.8 millimeters and the threads on a screw will certainly slice right through the wall and into the infill, which isn't good. Printing with thicker walls adds material and time, so that's not a good option either. To join things, you could simply undersize your bolt holes by 20 thousandths and then ram it into the hole. The friction also causes the plastic to melt a little bit and it'll form perfect threads that don't penetrate into the infill. So, if you need a threaded hole for a quarter inch bolt, you print the hole at 0.23 inches instead of 0.25 and then ram it home. It works extremely well and the same goes for screw holes and such. Unfortunately, I haven't found a glue that works really well for PLA that is safe. You can use super glue or epoxy though if your joint isn't under any stress. So, you allow 10 thousandths for a one-time press fit part or you can use nuts and bolts. Remember to oversize your bolt holes by 20 mil for it to slip through and your part to be able to spin. Then undersize the holes by 20 mil if you want to create threads in it. There is a third decently viable option that involves integral clips and slots. 
And this is common for people who are printing cases for electronics. But remember your allowances for the clip and slot, but don't count on the clip staying attached forever because of the filament follows function rule from episode four. However, if the clip isn't routinely flexed, it can work just fine. The problem with the integral clip is that the little shearing plane right at the base of the clip stem. And you could print a clip in its correct orientation and then bolt it to the device, but I rarely use clips and I don't recommend them. So there you have it from soup to nuts and bolts. I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the OU Innovation Hub's Digital Fabrication Lab. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And what do you want to make?